Today I've got a nice trigonometry problem for you. And it doesn't involve anything like super complicated technically, but it does involve a lot of creative thinking and some tricks. So I think that's what makes it interesting. So let's see what we've got. We wanna suppose that sine cubed theta plus cosine cubed theta equals 11 over 16, and use that to determine what is sine theta plus cosine theta. Okay, before we really get started on calculation here, I wanna recall a couple of things. First is the factorization rule for the sum of cubes. So the motivation for needing the factorization for rule for the sum of cubes is the fact that we have a sum of cubes right there. Okay, so let's recall that a cubed plus b cubed can be factored as a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. And you can check that just by multiplying out the right-hand side and see that you do, in fact, end up with the left-hand side. So that's one of the things that we'll use. Another thing that we'll use is probably the most well-known trig identity, the Pythagorean trig identity, that says for all angles theta, we know that sine theta squared plus cosine squared theta equals 1. And then among these two things, that'll actually provide enough for us to do this whole calculation. But before we get started again, I wanna introduce a little bit of notation that'll just help us out along the way. And that notation is we'll set x equal to sine theta plus cosine theta. Okay, so now let's get into it. I'll start with 11 over 16 is equal to sine cubed theta plus cosine cubed theta. So like I said, that's given. And now let's use this sum of cubes factorization. This factors like sine theta plus cosine theta. And then we've got sine squared theta minus sine theta cosine theta and then plus cos squared theta. So there we are th with that. Now let's notice using our notation that was introduced, sine theta plus cosine theta is equal to x. And then by the Pythagorean trig identity, we know that this sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to the number one. So that allows us to simplify our equation quite a bit. Now we have 11 over 16 equals x times one minus sine theta times cosine theta. But notice we still have something with sine theta plus cosine theta, so we need to work on that a little bit. And how might we do that? Well, let's look at x squared. So notice x squared is the same thing as sine theta plus cosine theta squared. And the motivation for this is we'll end up with a sine squared plus cosine squared, so we'll end up with part of the Pythagorean identity. And then we'll also end up with a sine theta times cosine theta, so that's really helpful. Okay, so anyway, let's multiply this out. This gives us sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta plus two sine theta cosine theta. So I'll just put things together so that it simplifies out nicely. So now, applying the Pythagorean trig identity, we know that this is equal to the number one. So that tells us that x squared is equal to one plus two sine theta times cosine theta. But we can easily solve that for sine theta plus cosine theta. Notice that sine theta times cosine theta is equal to one half x squared minus one, just by moving this one over and then dividing by two. Okay, so now the kind of obvious thing to do is to take this one half x squared plus one and plug it in right here. So we have this is one half times the quantity x squared, I should say minus one. So if we look at that carefully, that turns this into a polynomial equation for x, but notice x is exactly what we wanna find over here. So that's good news. 
maybe before we move on to the next board, let's simplify this a little bit. Maybe we'll simplify this a little bit by multiplying this entire equation by 16 just to clear denominators. So let's see, that's going to leave us with 11 on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, we'll have x times, so we'll have 1 minus, and then we have 16 times half, so that's going to be 8 times x squared minus 1. So this is where we've left ourselves. And so let's start the top of the next board with that cubic polynomial equation. Hey everyone out there in YouTube land, just wanted to take a minute to plug the Patreon. Patreon is a great way for viewers like you to get more involved in the community and earn awesome rewards, like live access to the Patreon seminar series, exclusive Discord perks, and early access to some videos. I'm really psyched about the power of this community to enact change for the betterment of math education, and we're well on our way to achieving our $1,000 per month goal. Thanks for all your support, and now back to the video. So this is where we left ourselves on the last board. Our variable x, which was sine theta plus cosine theta, in other words, our goal object, satisfied the following cubic polynomial. There was a bit of a typo on the last board, but I fixed that here. Here we have a 16 instead of a 1. Now I think maybe our best bet is to expand this out. So this gives us 16x, and then it'll be minus 8x cubed, and then let's see, and then plus 8 times x. So that's what we get from distributing this x through as well as this minus 8 through. Okay, so putting this all together, we see that we have the cubic polynomial equation 8x cubed minus 24x plus 11 equals 0. Now, cubic polynomials are in general like tricky to solve, but we can use something called the rational root theorem to see if there are possible rational roots, or to see what the possible rational roots are and then test those. So let's recall that our possible rational roots will be equal to plus minus the factors of 11 over the factors of eight. So that'll be plus minus one because one is a factor of 11 and eight. It'll be plus minus half plus minus quarter as well as plus minus one over eight. So that would be taking the factor one from 11 and then all the possible factors of eight. And then we also have plus minus 11, plus minus 11 over two, plus minus 11 over four, and plus minus 11 over eight. And so there's quite a bit to check there, but it's easy to check that plus minus one does not give us a solution. And so that means we should move on to plus minus half. And by a quick check, you'll see that plus one half is a solution to this polynomial equation. But if a half is a solution to this polynomial equation, that means that this thing should factor with 2x minus 1. So we should have this is equal to 2x minus 1 times something, and then obviously equals 0. So we immediately know what the first term here and the last term here is based off the fact that we need to multiply to 8. So this should be 4x squared, and we need to multiply to 11, so this should be minus 11. So now I think your best bet is just to guess and check this middle term, and we'll see that it needs to be 2x. And that allows us to do this kind of multiplication in order to achieve this cubic polynomial up here. Okay, and then from here we can find roots of the remaining quadratic polynomial, but for that we can just use the quadratic equation. And I'll let you guys check that, but what you end up with is x equals negative 1 plus minus 3 times root 5 over 4. So now we see that we have three possibilities. We have the possibility that x is equal to a half or x is equal to one of those irrational numbers. And you say, are all of these possible solutions or since x is equal to sine theta plus cosine theta is only one or two of them a solution or maybe none of them a solution. And in fact, we can use the range of sine theta plus cosine theta in order to figure this out. 
And I won't check this carefully, but sine theta plus cosine theta is strictly between the square root of two and negative the square root of two. And you can maybe do some simple calculus to find the maximum and minimum value for sine theta plus cosine theta to see this bound here. So one half is most definitely between the square root of two and negative the square root of two. So one half is most definitely one of our solutions. But it turns out that these numbers are outside of this range. So let's maybe put that here as a note. So negative one plus three times root five over four is in fact bigger than the square root of two. So that makes that impossible to be a solution. And then negative one minus three times root five over four is less than negative root two. So again, that's impossible for a solution as well. So that means we can disregard these as possibilities for our particular situation, and we end up with a value of sine theta plus cosine theta being one half. And that's a good place to stop. Thank you.